Hello everyone, I'm Hillary with Dominion Tea and today we're going to talk about oolong teas. So what are oolong teas? Um, this is a very broad category of tea. The reason it's so broad is an oolong tea can be oxidized anywhere from 25% to 85%. So you get a wide variety of teas. Now, generally speaking, oolong teas are going to come in two kind of leaf types. You're going to have a large twisted leaf of tea or a small bald leaf of tea. Um, it does not necessarily dictate, so the leaf uh, type does not dictate oxidation level. So you can absolutely have large twisted leaf that is oxidized to 25% or a bald oolong that is oxidized to 85%. You can also have in the middle of all of these leaf types an open leaf oolong, much like Oriental Beauty, which we'll talk about in a moment. So why such the differences in oxidation and color? It has to do with technique. And so this is where it gets lots of fun for the tea masters, because what they're doing is through the phases of making the tea, right? So they start with withering, just like we would for any other tea, white, green, or black. Right, then after it's withered, so the tea leaves are bendable, they're gonna ball them, twist them. With the oolongs, they're gonna do that repeatedly. And in some cases, they're gonna re-wet them in the middle of that process and keep repeating it, and then do a final bake at the end or a roast. Um, and what that does going through that balling and twisting process repeatedly is it changes the flavor profiles of the tea, making, in a lot of cases, very a creamy mouthfeel a very floral flavor, sometimes fruity, um, nutty, and you can even go so far as mineral. So let's introduce you to a couple of different oolongs that you might come across that kind of range this entire spectrum. So I always love to start kind of closer to the 25% oxidation mark. So these are light oolongs, sometimes slightly roasted. This is a beautiful Tiquan Yin out of China, slightly roasted, uh, in this case, you can get them unroasted. Uh, so this is gonna be very vegetal, almost like a green tea. Only again, because it's slightly higher oxidation and they've taken the time to ball up these tea leaves, it's gonna be a little bit creamier mouthfeel than you would get from a green tea. The other tea that kind of resides in this world, closer to oxidation, is the absolutely world famous Alishan teas. So Alishan teas come from the Alishan Mountain in Taiwan. And it is a beautiful place to produce tea because it gets morning fog and afternoon sun, which is perfect for tea plants up on the side of, of that mountain. It produces truly phenomenal flavor profiles. So you're talking exceedingly floral, um, sometimes a little vegetal, fruity, and absolutely creamy. Now, if you do like creamy oolongs outside of Alishan, there is also the milk oolong from China. No, there is no milk in it. Uh, it's actually a specific cultivar that was bred uh, with the sole goal of producing that creamy mouthfeel and smell. And so that's a fun one to explore as well. In the middle of the spectrum, going from very light to the middle of that oxidation range, we have Oriental Beauty. Now, Oriental Beauty has a story all by itself that is absolutely worth knowing. So good Oriental Beauty will be plucked just after the grasshoppers come through Taiwan. So again, this is another tea that comes off the, the island of Taiwan. Why Taiwan and oolongs? Well, in the 1960s, the tea industry in Taiwan absolutely abandoned making uh, green and black teas and went specifically for oolongs because they were having such a hard time competing with the tea uh, being made in mainland China. And because of their topography and their beautiful kind of weather, they figured out very quickly oolongs were kind of their sweet spot and the tea industry pivoted and went that realm. And so they've had a good 40 years of really dialing in how to do it well, and they do. Um, so Oriental Beauty, a little bit further down the mountain, closer to sea level, um, and those grasshoppers. So what are they doing with those grasshoppers? They're, uh, the grasshoppers come through the tea fields, they chew on the tea leaves, stresses out the tea plant, which causes the tea plant to make more catechins, uh, which gives the flavor to the tea. And so this Oriental Beauty is an absolutely gorgeous combination of caramel, as well as stone fruit. You can have a lot of fun trying to pick out the apricot versus the peach in it. But you'll notice it's more in the orange range 
it's, uh, we've gone from kind of a pale yellow to orange. And then on our last side, much closer to that 85% oxidation is the tea many people sometimes refer to as the granddaddy of oolongs. This is Da Hong Pao. So this comes out of Wuyi, China in the Fujian province, right? It also goes by the name of Big Red Robe. Uh, so when you have oolongs that have mythical names like this, uh, you know they've been around for a while. So the saying goes that um, a resident of Wuyi was headed to the emperor's palace to take the government exam so that he could work for the emperor. And he took Da Hong Pao with him and the emperor's mother was very ill and he gave Da Hong Pao to the emperor's mother and she became well and the emperor was so pleased he sent red cloths back with the man after he took his exam to protect the tea plants. Now, some of those original tea plants that are over 500 years old still reside in Wu uh, in the conservation district. So they're a beautiful specimen to go see and they are taken care of. Uh, they are still harvested um, and the tea leaves are auctioned off every year. Not a lot, only about a kilogram. So that's about two pounds. Uh, but they go for thousands of dollars every year in auction. So this gorgeous tea, because of where it grows, has a mineral profile that comes out when it is twisted and baked. But it, again, 85% oxidation, but you're going to notice this is a deep red. So this is also a fun one to play with. When you think about oolongs, if you're looking for adventure, this is a great class of tea to play in. You have lots of flavors, uh, different levels of oxidation, and you can truly enjoy learning about what topography does to tea. So if you've got any questions, just feel free to leave them in the comments and we hope you enjoy your oolongs. We hope you enjoyed learning more about tea with us. Hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when we add more videos to our channel. And check out the highlighted videos to learn even more about tea. And last but not least, you can check out all of the teas we talk about in our videos at dominionteacom